Hi, today in the shop we're going to talk about engine harmonic balancers, also known as torsional vibration dampeners or maybe just engine balancers. We're going to talk about why they're needed, what they're for, how they work. Uh, we're going to look at the rubber mounted ones and the viscous style dampener. So to start off, I think what we'll do is do a little demo as to what happens in an engine and why they're needed and then maybe that I'll better understand how they work. So I'm going to grab some tools. Okay so this is going to be, well we'll just say this is our crankshaft. It doesn't look anything like a crankshaft, it looks like a, an extension to me but it's going to be our pretend crankshaft. This here the ratchet is going to be the throw on the crankshaft. I'm not very tough so I need a long ratchet. So if we think about a crankshaft, it's well just a shaft with the throws around the outside of it. When we bolt on some weights onto the throws that simulate or are the same weight as a connecting rod and the piston and we bolt them on each throw, when we spin that crankshaft it'll be perfectly balanced. It'll spin smooth as smooth can be and that's all there is to it. Now something happens with an engine when it's running that causes us to require the harmonic balancer and I'm going to demonstrate what that is. So first off we need to draw a line on my extension here. Well, that didn't work where the hoot. Hmm, what else can we do? I'll meet you over at the lathe. Okay, now that we got our line drawn on our crankshaft, we're just going to show how the engine operates when it's running. So this is happening very, very quickly inside of an engine. We're going to slow it right down and you'll be able to see hopefully what's going on here. So basically I've got my crankshaft hooked to my wheel of my tractor and the wheels are resistance. We're going to say the wheel doesn't turn. We know it's turning in real life as the engine's running and the tractor's driving. But we're just looking at a really tiny little snippet in time. The ratchet is my crank throw. So me, I'm going to be pushing on the end of my crank throw uh, and my arm is going to simulate the combustion process in the engine. So let's get you down here. We'll look at this uh, crankshaft as the engine's running. So I'm going to push down on the throw, simulating accelerating the crankshaft and you can see the crankshaft twists starting here and I have a helix going up to straight and of course the other end is at its normal position. Okay, so that's what's happening in the crankshaft itself is the crankshaft is bending every time a cylinder fires. So I fire, pressure builds, the crankshaft twists, the piston pushes down accelerating that crankshaft and then somewhere down below the exhaust valve opens and the pressure in the cylinder drops to zero and the, it pops back. So I'll do that again. Cylinder fires, pressure builds up and the crankshaft twists. The exhaust valve opens and pressure drops and the crankshaft springs back to its original position. So that little demonstration we did was on the firing or power stroke. The same thing happens on the compression stroke. As the piston's coming up towards top dead center, compressing the air, it's going to flex the crankshaft in the opposite direction of engine rotation. We're going to inject fuel increasing the pressure in the cylinder. It's going to go over top dead center and then all of a sudden it went from bending one way to bending the other direction. So that's what's happening with the crankshaft on each and every throw. 
So if we have a six cylinder engine spinning at 2000 RPM, for example, that would be happening approximately 670 times a second, that bending one way, bending the other, bending back. Bending the crankshaft really isn't all that big of a deal. And not having it bent, of course, isn't a big deal at all. But what happens is when you bend it and it releases back, bends the other way and then forward and back, you can end up with developing harmonics in the crankshaft. So it's a similar idea to um, a crystal glass where you rub your finger on the top and it, and it makes that high pitched sound. The same idea is happening in the crystal as it is in the crankshaft. And at certain RPMs and certain loads, you'll develop a harmonic in there. And the, the crankshaft, even though it's physically balanced, is has such a high harmonics in it. And after many, many millions of cycles, probably what's going to happen is your crankshaft is going to break. So we need to add in something to help remove that harmonics from it. And uh, that's what our balancer does for us. So I've got two balancers here. So I'm going to go get, uh, we'll pull our rubber mounted balancer off of an engine and we'll have a look at it and explain how it works. So this is a small V8 street engine I'm building and it's got a rubber mounted harmonic balancer on it. So I'll just rip it off and we'll uh, have a look at it. Okay, so there is our rubber mounted harmonic balancer. Of course, that was not the way to remove this, but as you can see, the center hub is broken. Now, that didn't break when I hit it with a hammer. I actually pulled this off with a puller the way you're properly supposed to do it. But I was putting on a, a rigging and lifting demonstration or lesson for myself and I taught myself a lesson again, I never seem to learn this lesson, that being lazy and improperly rigging something, well, it ends up being expensive. I'm going to go through a dial indicator on the nose of that crankshaft and pray that it's straight. And if it's not, well, you might hear some weird howling, swearing sounds coming from out east. All right, great news. The crankshaft is straight. Just the balancer broke. So as we can see here, we got this really heavy weight and it's mounted on this rubber ring, which of course is mounted to the housing. Just gonna flip it over and there you can see the other side. So of course this side isn't broken. Looks good like that. Uh, the way it works, is this acts like, just like a flywheel. It's basically all it is, except instead of directly attached to the crankshaft, it's a, has this rubber ring in between. So that way when the crankshaft accelerates forward, or wants to accelerate forward and start that harmonic, as the crankshaft accelerates forward, this, we'll call it a flywheel, or fly weight has uh, inertia into it that doesn't want to accelerate. Objects in motion want to stay in motion and objects at rest want to stay at rest. So if I'm accelerating, it's like this thing here wants to stay at rest. So that'll make this inside hub travel forward a little bit, not very much, and this will stay where it's at. Now, when the exhaust valve opens, the crankshaft wants to spring back and this is now accelerated more. So as this springs back, this will travel further and help drive this along. So as the crankshaft is rotating and it, it'll cause the flywheel to rotate, when the crankshaft lets go, this continues to rotate trying to grab it and throw it forward. So while the crankshaft has that harmonic going on, this will have the same harmonic or similar, but it won't be at the same time. When this one's going forward, this one's stationary. When this one's coming back, this one's going forward. So they're out of time and they cancel each other out, getting rid of the harmonic 
in the crankshaft. So as for troubleshooting these, it's really not much to go wrong with them. The biggest thing we want to look for is if it was sitting on the engine and it was spinning, that it ran nice and true. And of course we know this one isn't because, well we can actually see it there from that broken hub. So if this disc is wobbling as the engine runs, it's toast. The other thing that happens with them, and this one doesn't have it, but some of them have a marking on them. Usually it's etched into it. And what you do is after a few hours of service, if you notice that the lines are no longer aligned, that means one of the two pieces has slipped on the rubber and now we don't have that um, proper bond between the two. So we won't end up with the harmonics working as well as it could because the one will slip further and further behind. Another time to replace it. Those are rubber, so they're affected by oil. So if you got a front main leaking or somewhere else oil's leaking down onto this, this will swell and become soft, bulge out, and force you to replace it as well. So that is the rubber mounted balancer. This is a cutaway of a viscous style. So of course this is going to be a complete ring. We just cut a pie shape out of it. You can see where it mounts to the crankshaft, generally used on much heavier duty engines. And what happens with it is this is hooked to the crank so when the crank fires and it wants to accelerate it, oops it didn't go, there. You see in the inside weight can slide in and out of there. So this is just a big round weight that just sits inside that and it can slide back and forth. Again acting like the flywheel. So I'm just going to pull this out. It's just a solid piece of weight. And that's what it looks like inside. Okay. So when this is in, assembled as a whole unit, in the spaces, the little bit of space that we have in there, it's filled with a very thick silicone fluid. Hence they call it a viscous dampener. It is a liquid inside. That really thick silicone, it has very good adhesion to this weight as well to, as to the outer housing and to itself. So now when the crankshaft goes to accelerate forward, it goes and wants to do that. The silicone fluid adhering to both of those tries to grab this piece and drive it with it. When the exhaust valve lets go and the crankshaft wants to spring back, this weight continues its forward travel, the silicone grabbing onto here and pulling it along. Again, the vibration of the crankshaft, that harmonic and the harmonic of this are not in time with each other, cancelling each other out. Troubleshooting these, there's not really a lot that we have to worry about. Uh, it says right there, handle with care, don't dent it. They're fairly thin and they're heavy so if you drop them, these can dent in and crush, pinching the weight so the weight can't move freely inside. If that happens, it's garbage. If you notice this silicone fluid leaking out anywhere from the, any of the seams, it needs to be replaced. And the other thing is hours of operation. Due to that ripping and tearing, what we can say of the silicone fluid, it will break down over time and its viscosity will change. So it'll come with time, just like all oils, they'll just wear out. And then, so after a certain number of engine hours, you replace it. Anyhow, I hope you found this informative and thanks for watching.